The NFL schedule releases tonight. We'll break down the top week one and some week two matchups that we know and ones that we're also highly anticipating. It's the Locked On NFL Podcast. Chris Carter, James Rapine. Let's get into it. You are Locked On NFL, your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On NFL Podcast. I'm Chris Carter. He's James Rapine. We're hosts of Locked On Steelers and Locked On Bengals, and we are your regular Wednesday hosts here on the Locked On NFL Podcast, which you can find on all your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this channel to get all of the daily episodes that come out from all the different hosts throughout the week. As always, this show is brought to you by Game Time. Get down with the game to map, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms and conditions apply. James. Tonight is the night we finally know all the NFL teams' full schedules. It's one of the more exciting days. It's always amazing to me how the NFL can take every little thing and make it a media circus. I'm doing a live streaming show for our local NBC station, uh, Channel 11 WPXI in Pittsburgh, because people are so excited about this. But it does come with its own fanfare because especially the the opening week games can be such really spicy storylines. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And this opening week is going to be filled with them. And you are right, though. The NFL has done a great job of just making it 24-7, 365. Uh, I'll be honest, full disclosure to to our listeners and viewers, the reason I want the schedule as early as possible is so I can book these flights, man. You don't want to get caught in in trying to get to – I live in Cincinnati. Getting to Kansas City is a pain if you don't have the flight well in advance. And so when that game leaked, or not leaked, but was announced on Tuesday, it was like, okay, well, week two, boom. I can I, I can book the, the flight. I can book the hotel. They are refundable, but at least I have something on the books, and, and I don't have to, to wait and, and do something last minute. So uh, let, let's let's start there. What do you think about the, the NFL? Did the NFL do the Chiefs a favor? Or did the NFL put the Chiefs uh, through the gauntlet, so to speak, by facing the Ravens on opening night on that Thursday, and then the following week, they play the Bengals at home. They're at home, but they're playing two AFC North opponents, two teams that are expected to contend in the AFC. I think that they did them a favor by putting the Ravens in week one. I don't think they did them a favor by putting the Bengals that right after because there's always the fanfare. Like the team that is coming off the Super Bowl win and you're having all the momentum from last year. You're getting the banner put up. There's all the excitement. Those teams mo- most often win those games. Like they're like they like they're built up for it, even when they're matched up with really good opponents that are even on their level and may end up being better than them at the end of the season. But that momentum often carries over into that game. There's a lot of there's a lot of goodwill b- built towards that. So I, I feel like getting a, a big opponent off in that first game can be a blessing in disguise for the, for for the Chiefs. But putting the Bengals right after them, saying like, okay, you just beat one of the top one, one of those AFC North teams that's the craziest division in football. Now you got to beat another one. And granted, it will be on it will be at home. And granted, it'll probably be is what 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 night is the the Chiefs Bengals game? Is it a Sunday? Is it a Sunday game? Sunday four twenty five CBS. So it's it's so, CBS's prime time game. So they'll have they'll have they'll have uh, an extra uh, an extra part of the week because they'll have the third the Thursday night game uh, of the week before. So they'll actually have some more time to recoup. So that part of it favors them. But yeah, if I'm if I'm the Chiefs, I'm like, man, I would have I would have liked a little break at the beginning, and and I would have been, even been fine going on the road so that you didn't knock out two of your home games in the first day the, the first week of the season. But I still think you know if you're the Chiefs. You're the champs. You're, you're Patrick Mahomes. You already got three Super Bowls. You don't care who you face at this point. He's like, we're we're here to beat all comers. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that mindset. And I I think it's interesting, especially from a, a Bengals perspective, because they've they played so many times later in the season over the past few years during this Burrow Mahomes rivalry. Obviously, Burrow didn't play them last year, but that's usually when the Bengals are gelling. They've gotten off the slow starts in recent years, and. One of the storylines going into this year will be for the Bengals to start fast. And so now, and we don't know who they're playing week one yet. I think it will Mm -hmm. be at home. But you're going to have a home game, probably, week one. And then week two, boom, Kansas City, the team that you're trying to dethrone and that you're trying to get past and that every team is trying to get past because they've just been dominant 
even in their down years. And last year, they were a flawed football team, and they still won the Super Bowl. So uh, what does that say about the Chiefs? It says that they're the kings, they're the champs for a reason. And so to get them early, there's good to it. I think from a motivational standpoint, you know, health-wise, you're probably going to be healthier earlier in the season. At the same time, this Chiefs team is going to look a little different. Yeah, Hollywood Brown is in town. They go get Xavier Worthy. Obviously, we know that Travis Kelsey is there. And so I, I do look at it that way, and I'm like, all right, well, they're going to look a little different on offense. I think the offense is going to have more firepower. That could catch some teams not off guard because we know Patrick Mahomes, Kelsey, Andy Reid. But it, it's a different wrinkle that the Ravens, the Bengals, and these teams, any team that plays the Chiefs in the first month of the season, that they're going to have to adjust to. And, and, yeah, I mean, part of it was also last year they won without playing with, with, with that kind of ball. They, they won a lot of games by just playing more conservative football, saying, hey, Patrick Mahomes, just make the right throw at the right time. You know, He was a game the- manager. Exactly. and like They needed that- him to be a game manager, yeah. And he and he was a great one. Like he he did it very no well. Doubt. Like that's will, not will, a knock. Just to be right. clear, it's no, no, just no. How yeah. They needed him to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I hate how people would be like, "You called him a game manager. You're disrespecting him." No, we're just acknowledging them. Like that the that the team isn't asking him to throw 50 times a game. They're they're saying, "Hey, throw 20 to 30 times a game because we have a balanced roster right now. You don't you don't need to put yourself behind the eight ball potentially when you have a defense that you can trust because it's one of the best defenses in the NFL." And I think that's the big question is. What type of Chiefs team comes out the gate here? Do they do they play the style they did last year that won the Super Bowl? Or do they play, get back to being a high-flying team that won them their first two Super Bowls with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes? That's a, that's, a, that's a great question. And, you know, getting these two teams, two of the perceived top teams in, in the in the NFL going into this season, that, that could be a major, a major talking point just as far as what we see the defending champs do going into this year. Yeah, I, I agree. I think... Man, it's it, it it's so interesting watching them and, and see how they've evolved. And you know that that evolution is going to continue. And defensively, they lost uh, the cornerback. I'm forgetting his uh, Sneed. I, I literally yeah. saw 38. I was like, who who was it again? Uh, Need <laughs> so we'll see there in the secondary. I think the secondary will be fine, but they're going to evolve. I think they're going to have to rely more on their offense. And that's why they trade up for Xavier Worthy. That's why yeah. they go get Hollywood Brown. And we'll see about the, the Rasheed Rice scenario and, and what happens with him. But I do think mm. that this offense is going to be better. The defense may take a slight step back, but they kept Chris Jones, which is the man. So you keep the man. You're still going to be pretty darn good on defense. And by the way, they extended Steve Spagnuolo with a really nice extension along with Andy Reid. So coaching staff-wise, they are good to go there. I... uh I'm excited to see these matchups early on. And if you're a Kansas City fan listening, what a way to get a jump on the rest of the conference. You start 2-0, and you beat the Ravens, you beat the Bengals, and you're feeling really good about your chances of, of being the number one seed in the AFC. So you have an opportunity within 10 days to give yourself a, a leg up on a, a significant part or, or two significant contenders for your AFC championship throw. Absolutely. But we also are starting to learn some of the other week one matchups. We'll go over some of those and then also week one matchups that we'd like to see, because, again, the NFL schedule releases 8 p.m. tonight, Eastern Standard Time. So we'll get into all those here on the Locked On NFL podcast. But first, I want to remind you, the show is also brought to you by FanDuel, the America's number one sports book. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL, and baseball is in full swing. That makes, that makes FanDuel your, your number one place to bet on every single game in all those sports. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 or more bet. That's $150 that you can use on point spreads, money lines, player props, and so much more. You can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks to who's going to win it all in every single league all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to take advantage of this offer today. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn for new customers to get $150 back in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. And that's from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Back at it on a Wednesday edition of Locked On NFL Schedule Release Day. And Chris, let's get into Monday Night Football, the debut for Aaron Rodgers. And I know he already debuted with the Jets, but not really. 
taking on the San Francisco 49ers. I love this. I love the storylines behind this. Obviously, you have the 49ers who are trying to get back to the Super Bowl and finish the job. You have the Jets who are all in on the now, on the present, to winning big. And you have a guy in Aaron Rodgers who's eager to show everyone that he can still play at a high level coming off of a torn Achilles at 40 and going up against the team that once upon a time shoulda, coulda, woulda drafted him with the first overall pick in 2005. The team he wanted to go to, I believe it was the team he grew up rooting for in California. Yeah. And so a lot of storylines on Monday Night Football. Absolutely. that's It's going to be exciting. I mean, also like – it's just deja vu of all the excitement of last year building up to Aaron Rodgers playing in that game. I, I'll never forget my, my old man was made late to watch. He wanted, he really wanted to watch that game. And then he was with somebody who held him up, made him late to, to see the start of the game. And he gets there and Aaron Rodgers is not in. He's like, Where, where's Aaron Rodgers? And then they're like, Oh yeah, he, he got hurt on the very first play of the game. And he's like, wait, 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 what do you mean? He got hurt? Like I just got here. And, and so that was kind of the, and like they're Jets fans who were, celebrating outside the stadium and then got into the stadium and got to their seats and were like, where's Aaron Rodgers? So this is going to be, there's a lot of Jet fans that are going to be sitting there like, please just, just, just let him get through a quarter before we see anything here. And that's the funny thing. We never got to see what the Aaron Rodgers Jets looked like. Like, like yep. last year, the Jets were just another laughing stock as they've been for most of the years that we've been alive, James. But mm -hmm. now Aaron Rodgers, he's supposedly back. And now he's back against one of the top teams in the NFL that's been around, a team that's going to bring it on defense, a team that has a, an organized offense, and, and a team that you know could be is one of the favorites to make the Super Bowl again. Um, I, I think this is a heck of a test to get to get back at them, and uh, an interesting chance for the Jets to kind of set a new tone to see, like, hey, because they might own this might be their only chance to strike with Aaron Rodgers. He might retire after this season, James. Yeah, I think that's that's what's so interesting about this. This is. Let's get this game. Honestly, I think what the NFL said is, all right, we know it's going to get ratings from the jump, and it's really interesting. We don't know what these teams are going to look like in week eight. And more so, we don't know what the Jets are going to look like in week eight. And so let's get it out of the way now. It's going to be blockbuster. It's going to be must-see. I'm in. I love the idea of this matchup. But you just don't know what this Aaron Rodgers is going to look like. Maybe he's awesome. That's great. But if you're if you're an NFL schedule maker, don't you want Jets prime time early in the season? And then yeah. late in the year, if they're still good, you can flex them and you can Very go true. that route and you can give yourself some flexibility. So I think that's what this was because there are so many questions. I don't really have many questions about the 49ers. I think they're going to be really good again. I, will they win the Super Bowl? I don't know, but they're one of the best teams in the NFC. And so that's a tough ask for the Jets who are are going to – they're not pieced together, all right? I don't want to say that, but they're going to feel new. Because you're right, we don't know what Aaron Rodgers with the Jets means. What I do know is that that offense has got to be better with Rodgers than it was last year. That defense is yeah. very, very real. Yep. And so can they lean on Brees Hall and can Aaron Rodgers be the game manager like Patrick Mahomes was last year? And if, if so, I think the defense, the running game, the pieces are around him where he doesn't have to throw it 40 or 50 times. Because he has Garrett Wilson, and then it's just a bunch of good, not great. Okay, that's fine. Uh, they they invested in their offensive line, so if the offensive line is better, if they have a running game, and they should, the defense is what it is. I, I think that the Jets can be good, even if Aaron Rodgers isn't playing at an MVP level. Yeah, uh, I think it can be. Um, I just I think that they're in a rough spot because they have to prove so much like, like, like they, this team, like la last year would have been the year for them to get their feet under them with Aaron Rodgers, for them to play the tough teams, figure out, okay, what, 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 where, 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 where did we hit last year? Where, where was our bumps in the road? Everything's no going to be an experiment this year because they didn't get to do that last year. And that's where I just, I don't know if the jets, if, if, I, I I'm, I'm not sure what the jets will do this year, because another thing is we know Aaron Rodgers can check out if, if, Things aren't aren't going the way that he wants, you know. If if things if things aren't going well, what what happens if like the rest of this Jets team just doesn't work around him mm -hmm. well, and then he starts to you know kind of do whatever he wants to do? We've heard about you know stuff that he did in, in in Green Bay, and then that leads to just more dysfunction and more problems, and then all of a sudden the Jets are like, wait a minute, we we put all this into just making getting a chance at a two to three year run with this guy, and this and we got a, a season of not having him and a season of bad that that's. 
there's a lot on the line there. And I think that you, you, if you're the Jets, you really, I think you almost need to come out the gate firing on all cylinders uh, against a team like the Niners to set a tone like, hey, no, 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 no. This was, we, we, we promised this was going to be great. This is what it's going to be this year. Yeah. I, I, I think you're 100% right. If they go out on Monday night football and beat the 49ers, changes that the reactions are the Jets legitimate super Super Bowl contenders. It's going to happen, even if it's like 20 to 17. But can you imagine if they come out? Aaron Rodgers is 29 of 34. They win 31 to 17. It's never really close. Brees Hall runs for a buck fifty. Be crazy. Uh, uh, Amon Sauce Gardner has an interception. Like, could you imagine oh, the what, hype. what the it's gonna be oh, there? My goodness the hype train will just mm-hmm. i also think by the way it, there's not many veteran receivers out there i wouldn't be shocked and obj was the one where i was surprised i, I thought he was just going to end up in new york this year i i think that the the jets are going to try to add a weapon between now and the training camp maybe i'm wrong but kind of like dalvin cook last year i wouldn't year be surprised they and they added a veteran yeah yeah i wouldn't be surprised at that at all i think that they're the, the, again, they're in a position where, like, if I'm if I'm the Jets, I'm I'm feeling like like Sean McVay and the Rams. I'm I'm trying to I'm I'm front loading it right now because I don't know when we're getting our next guy that's going to be you know franchise caliber quarterback. And again, you only got Aaron Rodgers for but so long. Strike while the iron is hot. Get aggressive. You know, make make moves if you see opportunities there. And don't sell the farm. Like you know, don't do a Herschel Walker trade where you give up everything under the sun. But I think that I'm. Uh, I think that if if I'm the Jets, I am trying to, I'm leaning more towards like, hey, let's just, let's put everything into this next two seasons and see what we can get out of Aaron. Yeah, I I agree. I I think that's, that's what you committed to when you made that trade. And you gave yourself, you gave yourself a small window like the Buccaneers did with Tom Brady. The Buccaneers cashed in year one. Aaron Rodgers got hurt year one. Can you rebound? That's a big, big question facing the Jets. We will be following it here on Locked on NFL. Up next, thoughts on the other games we know about, plus some week one matchups that we would love to see. We'll get into that coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the app you need to download right now. Why? Well, the NFL schedule is either out when you're listening to this, almost out, and if you're trying to go to Jets, 49ers, maybe it's Bengals, Chiefs, maybe it's Ravens, Chiefs. Regardless, every single NFL game that you want to go to, you can get tickets to with game time. And the beauty about game time is you can get tickets in advance and you're going to find awesome deals. Or maybe kickoff is 25 minutes away. Well, they have last-minute deals for you with game time. You can get views right from your seat. They have all-in pricing, so it shows exactly what the tickets are going to cost without any hidden fees. So all you have to do is download the Game Time app today and take the guesswork out of buying tickets. When you create an account, make sure you use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL. L O C K E D O N NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, so we're back here on the Locked On NFL podcast. Chris Carter, James Rapine. James, we know of a few other week one matchups here. Um, We know the Packers are going to play the Eagles in Brazil to kick things off on September 6th. So that's a Friday night matchup there uh, where they get to play. What do you think about Friday night? I don't hate it. I hate all of it. Just (laughs) thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Back to Sunday and Monday and like. An occasional like Thursday, like 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 if you're doing Thanksgiving, that's fine. I hate Thursday night football. They're gonna that's do, never going away. That's it's never going away it, because no. it makes money, and I get it. But that's it sucks. It's stupid. I think and they now, would do Wednesday if they could. I think they would try to own the whole. They're day already doing it. They're putting Christmas on Wednesday. I'm like, man, man forget oh, yeah, this. Right. Like, forget. By the forget way, all of this. That's my fear. You want to talk about yep. schedule fears? Oh, I hate it. That's it. If if the Bengals play, if they play on the road. For Christmas, and I know our listeners don't care. I'll keep this. If they play on the road for Christmas. I'm not going. I'll tell you now, it's stupid. And if they play, it, and if they play at home on Christmas, well, then I'm screwed. Am I not going to just go 15 minutes from my house to go to the game? But then I miss Christmas. Yeah, like that, exactly. What in the world, man? And also, yeah. What are you? Asking Roger Goodell hates fans? me. But, but what also, what are you asking your fans? Like you're telling your fans, like, hey, 
you know, that time of the year where you're already investing all this money to get to get presents for your family is you get like one, maybe two days off, but, but, but you know, depending on your profession and you want to spend it with your family. Oh, but now you you had you were you wanted to go to this game. Guess what? This game's on Christmas Day now and it's on a Wednesday. So that's the other thing. It'd be one thing if it was Christmas on a Saturday or Sunday. I've covered Saturday or, or Sunday sure. Christmas games like I've, no I, was, I, I, I can't I, I, control I that. That, that, that that is what it is i flew to houston that's fine like you know I, I i i did that but on a wednesday because here's the other thing is most times when it's like when christmas is in the middle part of the week guess what happens the day after christmas people go back to work so like i just i hate i hate christmas day games if it's in the middle part of the week if it was thursday i'd get it if it was if it was a normal nfl game i'd get it but nfl games not on traditional days i hate all of them and also because like i love football in general but there's more than just the NFL. There's college football. Th- Thursday night is a great night for the extra college football game that week. Friday night the NFL is when- doesn't care. The you NFL know doesn't that. care. They don't. But I'm like, but like me is the other. Let let the NFL like you know what? Let me have my days where I have my days, and then let all these other leagues and other football build up. Like Friday night, that's Friday night lights, man. That's high school football in all the in, across the country. Let. Let the kids have that night because that's again what part of builds up the culture of football because it's not just the NFL it's 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 literally to high school to college and then getting there and I just I, I hate that the NFL is trying to monopolize every single stupid day of the week to be their day and it's just driving me nuts. Anyways, let's talk about more of these matchups here before I keep going on a rant about how much I hate the NFL trying to take over every day of our lives. Uh, but. It- they um, they do like a Monday a Monday night matchup and then a that they'll have a Tuesday night one gamer stupid what <laughs> Wednesday stupid. Christmas I hate it. The, 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 there there's just no days off in, in the, there's, the there's, next level of the NFL the, the smartest Tuesday night football thing was ever done which the NFL canceled by the way was one of the best one season shows of all time playmakers and if anyone is an old school espn nut they know what i mean that show was classic and then the nfl was like that show's too real it shows too many problems that are in our league get that off the air espn and we're taking yeah. away monday night football that's yeah. what two, they get tuesdays for entertainment and other things let football just be sunday and monday i'll even even take it off thursday but anyways packers eagles is interesting to me because i th- or it, because I, I look at jordan love and look at jalen hurts jordan love i feel like made his step up last year, and now this is his chance to be like, hey, last year wasn't a fluke. We're really taking steps forward as an organization. Now you're about to see the full wrath of what we got. The Eagles, on the other hand, Jalen Hurts, I still think, is that dude. Like, he's a bad man. But mm-hmm. the problem is they had they had to gut their coordinators. Um, they, they, they fell off at the end of last year. The Eagles, I think, they're in a position where it's a good thing they're in Brazil because if they played that game in Philly and they got mollywhopped by the Packers – Eagles fans might lose it, and it might be a rough spot for that coaching staff. Because I know, I know, I, I I went to college out near Philadelphia. I have a lot of Philadelphia friends who are mm-hmm. Eagle diehards, and they do not spare anyone when they think that their team is is underperforming. And when you were just to the Super Bowl a year ago, and you flop as hard as you did at the end of last season, there's a little bit of uh, restlessness going on in Philadelphia right now. City of no doubt, love. no doubt, and I think. You know who's going to be watching this game closely? Who's going to be watching who's Browns, that? Cowboys closely? Who's that? Who's uh, that? Maybe even the Giants. Bill Belichick. He's just going to be lingering over. Uh, you're going to hear me talk about this multiple times during the season. He's just going to be lingering there. Ah, interesting. <laughs> A coach you need. Ah, you know, and the, the Eagles would certainly be at the top of that list, right, with the talent that they have. So I'm not saying now. But uh, yeah, they they have something to prove, and and so do the Packers. The Packers yeah. can show that they're a true contender, and that Jordan Love uh, is an elite quarterback, and that they made the right decision. Because by the end of last year, Jordan Love was balling and uh, was a problem. And if he can continue that trajectory, then going from Favre to Rodgers to Love is about a, as good of a a trio in thirty year run as you can have and so the, he has a chance of doing that and solidifying that this year so that's a big game and i'm interested in the storylines and guess what that's why the nfl just to circle it back is doing what it's doing because yeah. people are interested the christmas day guess what people are going to watch it's going to draw ratings and i probably am going to be watching too even if it's the team i cover because i really don't think i'm leaving <laughs> leaving the fam on christmas uh for, for work unless i i get forced to i don't think i'm but yeah, uh, hopefully not. But 
put like Denver, Detroit or something on. And I don't even know if they play each other, but put that on. Christmas. <laughs> people are going to watch anyway. Yeah, people are going to watch anyway. You don't need your like headliner teams. People are going to turn it on because it's football. So put, put a bad game on. That's all right. They won't, but I would. Let's look at some other potential games. So we, you know, Browns Cowboys is another week one game, but let's look at other games we want to be week one in the NFL to be like to, to, to lead things off here. I'm gonna go with a game that's on the Steelers schedule that a team that I cover, and that's Steelers Broncos, because this is gonna be the chance for the Broncos and and Russell Wilson to have their their little dance against each other. And then you put it in week one, there's a high much higher chance that it's actually going to be Russell Wilson versus mm-hmm. uh versus Sean Payton. Because here's the thing is if you're if 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 you're if you're looking at the Steelers, there you know there's a chance that Justin Fields takes this job at some point, but there's also a chance that you know maybe Russell Wilson holds on to it at the beginning of the season. But if he loses the job, then you'd miss out on this matchup. So if I'm the NFL, why not get this matchup out of the way early? You'd have yep. the Broncos versus Russell Wilson and 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 the Steelers. They're one of those those teams that everyone still tunes into, even though the Steelers haven't won a playoff game in a minute. They're always relevant. They're always either in the playoffs or in the playoff hunt. I think they've made the playoffs throughout the last four years. So uh, and the Broncos, they're a team that's trying to rebuild. They got a lot to prove. They're going to have a rookie quarterback in Bo Nix. I, I think that would be an exciting matchup there to, to, to see the new quarterback facing the quarterback that they that they you know shipped out of Denver and are paying thirty eight million dollars still for. Lock it in, lock it in. Seriously, that that would be that makes that game must watch. Hell, you could almost prime time it. I wouldn't, but you could almost do that. That that that's how interesting it would be. Not that it would be a good game, but by the way, if if you just want storylines, they'll, they'll do the Monday Night Football doubleheader, and it'll probably be announced by mm. the time people hear this. But you already have Jets 49ers. Yeah, the other game could be Steelers. Versus Broncos. Like you yeah, could totally go that route where you're not having two. Cause I think that's a big game because of the storylines, but it's not like two teams that we're expecting right. to be there at the end. Right. And, and, and so it's a good way to get ratings on that game. At the same time, could I see them put that week four? It, it no doubt on, on CBS or something. Yeah. I could see them doing that as well, but man, week one, the other Monday night game, sign me up. Similarly, I'm, I'm looking for storylines. I'm looking for, for connections mm-hmm. here. You got the Minnesota Vikings with J.J. McCarthy, Jordan Addison, Justin Jefferson. Why not put them up against the Atlanta Falcons with Kirk mm-hmm. Cousins? That would be that would be exciting to me. I would I'd love to see that match up the new quarterback versus the old quarterback who also has the new quarterback behind him and Michael Penix. There's there, there's some really interesting potential matchups that you could you could throw here. And if, if I'm the NFL, I'm trying to get all those storylines out front as fast as I can. That's a really good one because Kirk Cousins coming back from the Achilles, you don't know what it's going to be like. It's another one where you want it early, kind of like the Rodgers scenario. Yep. You want yep. it early, assuming he'll be ready. I think Rodgers will be ready. By the way, I think Kirk will be ready too, especially now that there's a Michael Penix um, mm-hmm. that's in the room. So I, I love it. I, I like the way you think. Roger, I, the schedule isn't officially out yet. You can make tweaks even if some of these things are announced. Listen to Chris and listen to us about Christmas Day. I've complained a lot about it, but my God. I'm complaining a lot about it. I'm still complaining about it. I get, get like, like, look, again, it's, it, I, I get, I also feel like Christmas Day is meant for the NBA. Let the NBA have that day. They don't want that, though. They don't want the NBA to have nothing. You know, like that, it's the competitor. They're like, no, we own every day. Every day is NFL day, which, by the way, we benefit from, right? <laughs> Having interest in our work. So I'm not complaining there. It's just I'm complaining. The Christmas stuff. <laughs> it's tough. The, the Christmas one's tough. That's all. Ab- That's all. Absolutely. But, but we'll get to see who, who gets the Christmas day Christmas day games. Uh, this tonight. Remember, 8 p.m. Eastern is when the uh, the team the, all the, all the team schedules will be revealed by the NFL. We'll get to see who plays Christmas, who plays Thanksgiving, who plays Week One. All that will be coming out tonight, and I'm sure we'll be reviewing that on the Thursday episode of the Locked On NFL Podcast. James, it's always great to work with you. I'm Chris Carter. He's James Rapine. Thank you for tuning in to the Locked On NFL Podcast. Remember to subscribe on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this channel to get more. Back Thursday with more right here on the Locked On NFL Podcast.